Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a bit of an AOS projects update because I'm going to be taking you through two brand new designs which I'm releasing today through CNC drones and Brain3D. We're going to be looking at the new AOS 7 V5. This is the V5 upgraded version of the AOS 7 frame. We're going to be looking at that and I think even more exciting we are going to be looking at something brand new. This is the AOS HS5. It's a high-speed drone for filming the fastest racing cars and bikes. And I think this is the fastest FPV drone frame that money can buy today. So let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it and get started. All right, so let me take you through the upgraded AOS 7 V5. And we're gonna start at the front end with the brand new camera cage. The AOS 7 V5 uses the same 7000 series aluminum camera cage as the AOS 5 V5. And this provides great protection for whatever camera you're using, the ability to soft mount the DJI 03 camera and other 20 millimeter cameras. And also it provides the option to hard mount 19 millimeter cameras. So whatever video system you're using, this aluminum camera cage is gonna protect it and provide super, super smooth footage. And it's also just a lot easier to build and maintain the front end now because this camera cage is secured to the base plate with four screws. So when you take the top plate off, nothing moves. The camera just stays absolutely fixed. Flipping the frame over, the AOS 7 V5 now has the AOS XL anti-vibration technology built into it. So you can see we've got the slots cut out here for access to all of the stack screws. And if I angle the frame just right, you can also see the AOS XL cutouts in the main plate here, which is gonna give you even better vibration isolation for the flight controller. And therefore you're gonna be able to run higher PID gains and get better flight performance. Similar to the AOS 5 V5, all of the arm and stack screws now have reinforcing press nuts in the main plate. This means that you don't need to be worried about stripping out the threads in your standoffs anymore. These steel press nuts are really, really difficult to strip and that's gonna just give you extra durability and just a bit of extra security when you're assembling the frame. You can make sure you can get enough uh, torque on these screws without worrying about stripping out the aluminum standoffs. And all of this, uh, this reinforcement is present across the frame front to rear. There have also been just a couple of changes to the top plate as well. I've added these cutouts for an XT60 panel mount connector. There's one here, one up front as you can see, and in the final production version there's also going to be a third one in the rear here. We've also taken the two SMA mounting points and moved them forward to give you more clearance for the USB port on the flight controller. So if you're interested to try a super durable and super smooth 7-inch FPV frame for freestyle or long-range cruising with all the latest features from AOS, I'll put a link to the AOS 7 V5 down in the video description. Please do consider checking it out. And I'm going to be publishing a build guide for the frame, which you won't need because this frame is so easy to build. And there's also a preset for the AOS 7 in Betaflight so you don't need to tune it. You can just fire and forget on my tune for the frame and it'll fly brilliantly straight out of the box. The drone design featured in the next part of this video is capable of achieving speeds that may exceed the maximum permitted ground speeds as regulated by aviation authorities in some jurisdictions. Operating a drone at such speeds may require special permissions or waivers depending on where you are. The flights shown in this video were conducted in full compliance with all relevant regulations and safety protocols. Please ensure that all of your flights are safe and in compliance with the local laws and regulations in your region. Now it's time to talk about something that's for those of us who want to go really, really, really fast. This is the brand new AOS HS5, the High Speed 5. And this was inspired by a video that you've probably all seen, which is Red Bull chasing an F1 car with an FPV drone. I saw that video and I thought to myself, well, I want to make a drone, a drone frame that can do that, that can capture those kind of shots of high speed racing cars, high speed racing bikes, but that is as easy to build, as easy to tune and as easy to fly as any regular five inch FPV drone. And I think I've succeeded and I am really excited to share with you what I've come up with. But before we dive into the frame design, I have to show you some flight test footage. 
Let's take a look at some flight test footage now to give you an idea of what it's like to fly the drone. This is being recorded on board on the O3 Air unit with no stabilization. I'm using a 6S 1800 milliamp hour battery, 2808 1950 kV motors and 5.25 by 8 inch pitch props. You can see that I can just cruise out to the end of the field flying it like any other FPV drone and now I'm lining up for the high speed pass, just pitch the quad forward, increase throttle and let that speed build up. On this pass here, we really got moving, 191 miles an hour on that pass. And you can see at the end, I just pitch back and cruise the drone back towards myself with no problem. I actually did several high speed passes on this 1800 milliamp hour battery. I got three passes in and a flight time of between three and four minutes. I think you could probably squeeze maybe four high speed passes out of an 1800 milliamp hour pack, depending on how much um, cruising you're doing in between. The concept behind the AOS HS5 is a really simple one. You're going to start with the drone in the vertical orientation standing on its tail and you can take off and fly just like any other regular FPV drone and cruise around lining up ready to capture your footage. The main difference will be that you'll be running a lot of camera up tilt, probably 45 to 60 degrees or even more. When you're all ready to capture your high speed footage, you just pitch the drone forward so that you're now flying horizontally and you increase throttle. The camera is now looking downwards. So you're looking down at the racing car or bike or whatever you're chasing. And you're also behind and above it. So you're getting that chase shot that you can't really capture any other way. In this configuration, the drone is incredibly slippery and low drag. So you can achieve a really high top speed for a few seconds and capture that footage. Then after your high speed pass, you just pitch back up, cruise back to where you want to land and then land it vertically just like any other FPV drone. This concept makes the drone very, very easy to fly if you've got a little bit of experience flying FPV drones. To achieve these high top speeds, there's quite a lot of aerodynamics going on in this design. Obviously, you can see that all of the electronics and battery is shrouded to improve streamlining, and we have this nice 15 degree boat tail at the rear of the drone to reduce the form drag. At the back of the drone, we have this open grid this allows air from inside the drone that was used for cooling to actually fill in the low pressure wake behind the drone, which reduces drag further. The arms and the motors are all shrouded in these aerodynamic fairings. And we also have this aerodynamic spinner on the prop. Now, you may decide to run with or without this spinner. The spinner reduces drag, but it also increases the rotating mass of the motor and therefore can increase vibration. So there is a bit of a trade-off. The spinner will give you higher top speed, but also a little bit more vibration. You may decide to run with or without it. At the rear of the drone, we have these fins, and this is to provide stability at high speed. It moves the center of pressure of the design behind the center of mass, and that means that at high speeds, you get really nice, stable, smooth footage, and the drone is very controllable. They also have the added benefit of providing a nice flat area to land on. So the aero on this design is pretty cool, but what I'm actually most proud of is the packaging. In the front shell, you've got space for the O3 camera, a GPS module at the back here, the O3 air unit and its VTX antenna, an ELRS receiver and a 2.4 gigahertz T-style antenna for that, and a 30 by 30 stack. All of that fits in the front shell and you can fully assemble everything and then have access to the USB port for the VTX and the USB for the flight controller through these cutouts. So you never have to disassemble the front aero shell. And these cutouts also serve to keep all of the electronics inside cool. And that's really, really important when you're flying at these high speeds because in a shrouded design, the flight controller and ESC can get a bit warm if you don't have enough cooling. This all leaves the rear shell completely empty and free for the battery. Now this rear shell will hold a 6S 1800 milliamp hour tattoo R-line or any battery up to about 90 millimeters long. I'll put the specs um, down below so that you can make sure your battery will fit. You just pop the battery in the rear shell and connect it up by the XT60. And then it's a simple matter of just locking the two halves of the shell together like that when you're ready to go fly. And those plastic twist clips are pretty strong, but there's also an optional grub screw here. So you can do that up just to make doubly sure that that shell cannot open during flight. So once you've done all that, you are ready to fly and swapping the battery. Well, 
It really couldn't be any easier. I'm putting together a build guide for this frame over the next few days, but until then, let's talk components, starting with the battery. I've tested six S packs from about 1500 to 1800 milliamp hours, and they work great. Obviously, make sure that whatever battery you want to use is going to fit in the battery bay. Some 8S packs around 1200 to 1300 milliamp hours will also fit. Do with that information what you will. I haven't tested this drone on 8S and it goes like hell on 6S. So um, yeah, 8S use with caution. Hi there everyone, Chris in the future here. A little bit more info. On 6S, the 2808 1950 KV motors will draw about 40 amps each per motor at full throttle on 5.25 by 8 inch pitch props. If you want to go up to 8S, that current draw is going to increase. It's going to draw probably 55, maybe 60 amps at full throttle on that same 5.25 by 8 inch pitch prop. So just make sure that the ESC that you're using is capable for that. You still want to use the same 2808 1950 kV motors, whether you're running 6 or 8S. For the ESC, you're going to want at least a 50 amp rated ESC on 6S and probably a bit more if you want to go for a higher voltage like 8S, maybe 60 or even 80 amps. And your ESC is going to want to be a 30 by 30 4 in 1. For the motors, a 2808 1950 kV is going to be right for this build. That fits with the fairings and it's going to provide plenty of power for the type of props that we're going to be using. For props, you're going to want to use the APC 5.25 by 6.25 inch prop. Um, that's what I recommend and that's what Luke Bell says is going to be the sweet spot for this kind of build. APC also do a 5.25 by 8 inch prop, which is even more extreme. That's going to draw even more current, even more power. Everything's going to get hotter, but it will give you more thrust at high speed. So 5.25 by 6.25 recommended and try steeper pitch props with caution. In terms of video system, O3 Air unit is what the frame's designed for, but any 19 or 20 millimeter camera and VTX will fit. ELRS 2.4 gigahertz fits really nicely. If you're going to use 900 megahertz, you're going to need to probably curve the um, T-style antenna around inside the shroud, but it should fit just fine. For the GPS, the GPS bay in the front shroud is 25 by 25 by 9 millimeters, so any mini 20 by 20 GPS should fit just fine. Hopefully that helps you with your component choices. Any questions, of course, leave them down in the comments. If you're keen to get your hands on the fastest 5-inch FPV frame that money can buy, the carbon and hardware is available from Nick at CNC Drones, and all of the 3D printed shrouds and fairings are available from Brian at Brain3D. I'm also working to try and get this frame kit more broad availability through retailers globally, and I'm working with iFlight to do that. But AOS is just me and a bit of time from my partner Flora. So we're working as hard as we can, but there's only so fast that we can get these designs out there. And I wanted to get them out sooner rather than later for those of you who um, like to buy from CNC Drones and Brain3D. It's also great to support these companies because you know, they are really supportive of us in the FPV hobby. So that's the availability. You can also, of course, get the AOS 7 V5 from CNC Drones. All the links you need are down below. Please let me know what you think down in the comments. And I really look forward to seeing what you guys do with these designs. Um, please tag me on Instagram, share the videos, share the footage. I love to see it all. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.